Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to a new series called Learning C++ 20. So, in this new series, we're going to be taking a look at the language features and library features of C++ 20 as they're being implemented by uh, the different compiler vendors. So, as you can see um, from this site, they'll link below, uh, we have a complete list of, you know, basically the compiler support for a number of different uh, compilers that support C++. So we see, you know, basically what features of C++ 20, GCC, Clang, and MSVC have implemented. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at JThread, which as of right now um, is only implemented by GCC 10, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, show an example of JThreads with GCC 10. So before we get into what JThreads are, right, let's go ahead and kind of motivate their need um, with a quick example of normal C++ 11 threads. So let's go ahead and open up this background.cpp. Uh, and here we have the creation of a single thread uh, using a lambda. So right here, we're creating a thread T0. And this thread will just have a quick print in here that says printing from the new thread. So we all kind of know what happens um, if we do something like t0.join. If we do t0.join, that just means we're going to wait for t0 to finish at this join spot before we continue execution of our main thread. So what happens when we compile this? Well, if I just do g++ on background, link against libp thread, um, and I run this, every single time it will say printing from the new thread, because it will wait for that thread to finish before we continue on in our main program. But one thing that we might not have covered in other series is what happens if we call detach. So let's actually look at what detach does um, inside of std thread. So if we go ahead and go to detach, it says separates the thread of execution from the thread object, allowing execution to uh, continue independently. Right? And then any allocated resources will be freed once the thread exit. So after calling detach, this no longer owns any thread. Right? So um, basically what happens here is we're detaching the thread Right. It's exactly as it sounds. Um, but what does this mean in terms of execution? Right. What happens when we run the program now? So here we see that um, if we go ahead and recompile this program and we run it, sometimes it doesn't print anything. Right. In fact, in many cases, it won't print anything. And this is because the main thread will go ahead and continue on execution um, until uh, basically the program exits. And when the program exits, all the threads get killed. But this doesn't mean that um, in every case, right, we won't get a print. Sometimes we will get a print. So if thread T0 starts early um, and then it does its print before the main thread can finish, right, so detach doesn't pause the main thread, we can get printing from new thread. But what happens if we don't include either? What if we don't join and we also don't detach, right? So let's go ahead and see what happens here if we recompile this and then we run it. We see that. We, you know, we end up getting an abort get called, right? So, and this happens, you know, pretty much every single time. Um, so why is there an abort getting called? Well, this goes back to, you know, part of the language. And what we have to do is we have to look at what happens in the destructor, right? So T0 is just a thread object. So what happens when we destroy this thread object? Well, if the thread object is joinable, std terminate gets called. What happens if uh, std terminate gets called? Well, if we go down here, we can see that um, a joinable thread is destroyed or assigned to, right? So this, that's when this gets called. And then it says down here that the default std terminate handler calls std abort, right? So that's why that abort is getting called in this case. But we notice that some, something that's kind of, um, uh, that's, that's something that we don't really want going on here. If the thread has already completed and we can join it, right? Stood, uh, uh, std terminate gets called, right? If the thread is still going on, right? If it's joinable, but it's still executing, std abort still gets called, right? So, you know, what's the problem? Well, why doesn't it happen if we go ahead and detach the thread? Well, when we detach the thread, joinable becomes false, right? We can't join a thread that we've detached. We don't get the std, ab uh, std abort. But we don't have any way to control if we want to say, tell the thread to, hey, can you hurry it up? Or can you go ahead and, uh, can you go ahead and say, you know, exit without calling abort, right? We don't really have that, oh, an easy way to do that with normal C++ 11 threads. So now we've got std j threads, right? So that's our motivating example now. Uh, so std j thread has this interesting property where if we look at the destructor of what happens, it doesn't call std terminate, 
what it does is it calls request stop and then join. So basically in the destructor for a J thread, it calls join. So when main finishes and you know things like our thread object are going to be destroyed, well, it'll go ahead and just call join in there. And before main you know, finally finishes up, it basically calls join and we're just waiting for the thread to complete. So it, we won't wind up getting this abort get called and we don't have to detach the thread um, either. So let's go ahead and see a quick example of that. So if we go ahead and go to uh, jthreads.cpp, so here we have a very simple example. We don't have a join, we don't have a detach. All that's going to happen is that our J thread is going to go basically go out of scope. The destructor is going to get called, but that's going to go ahead and call join for us. So here we see just printing from a new thread. We'll go ahead and quit out of here and I'll do G plus plus. And again, the version of this is G plus plus 10, right? So if we go ahead and compile this with um, standard equals C plus um, plus 2A, right? For you know the pre-release C plus 20. And then we go ahead and pass in J threads and link against libp thread, right? We see we can compile this code. And again, the header for this is just the exact same thing. It's just going to be, um, let's open up J thread again. We see that the header for this is just going to be thread. So this is all within thread. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And you see that every single time we'll get printing from a new thread, right? And that's because our destructor is actually calling join, right? It's not calling something like std terminate, which is calling abort, right? And we also haven't detached it, so the main thread's not gonna finish and kill everything, including all of the threads early, right? Okay, so that's a very simple example, but what about something a little more complicated? What if we have a thread that's continuing execution Right? or it's it's doing something, maybe it's inside of a loop, and we want to like gently ask it for it to stop, right? Or finish up what it's doing without calling something like, um, without terminating it. Well, if we go ahead and go to the stop token, so one of the things we can pass to these J threads is a stop token, right? So if we go back to the C++ reference, um, and we see, we go in here, and we see we've got a thread support library and we go to stop token, right? So a stop token class provides a mean to check if a stop request has been made or can be made, right? So it gives us a way to ask a thread to stop. So what we'll do here is we'll launch a thread. We'll call it JT0, it's J thread. And here we'll pass it a stop token. So this is just std stop token. Uh, we'll call the token TK. And then within a loop, we'll just go ahead and print out some value I. Right, so here we'll say printing value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But then every single iteration of loop, we'll just check to see if a stop has been requested. And then between iterations, we'll go ahead and you know sleep for one second, right? So this is using std, this thread. Um, so basically, because this is launched as a different thread, this J thread here, we can access this thread, and this means something different than the main thread. And then we can tell it to sleep for some amount of time. In this case, std chrono seconds one. So it'll sleep for one second. Then we have our main thread, and we'll pause the main thread for a bit. We'll pause it for five seconds, and then we'll go ahead and request the thread to stop. And then we'll print out stopping the J thread. And we have to remember that this request to stop, um, you know, what we're basically doing here is we're saying, hey, I want the, this thread to stop execution. Um, and that will be checked by this token right here, right? So this token of stop requested, it will see that the main thread requested this to stop. Now, um, when it comes to you know overall execution here, if we didn't request a stop, what we'd expect to have happen is that eventually we'd get a request to stop in the destructor of JT0, right? Because that's what happens when um, the, the thread object goes out of scope or the J thread object goes out of scope. If we go back here, if we go into the destructor again for J thread, it says that um, if joinable's true, calls request stop and then join. So the destructor will automatically call request stop. All right, so let's go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and compile this and we'll run this and we'll see what happens. So here I'll just do G++ on stop token and I can do everything else the same. So um, standard equals C++2A and then I'll link against libp thread. See, everything compiles just fine. And then I can run it. You see it's printing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Remember the main thread. So the main thread says stopping the J thread before it goes out of scope. And then the other thread eventually gets a signal that it should stop, right? So it might have received the signal while it was sleeping. So the next iteration around, um, it'll go ahead and stop.
So that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. This is the basics of using uh, these J threads and these stop tokens. It shows how we can basically pass a stop signal to a thread instead of, you know, doing something crazy and forcing it to stop or maybe throwing some kind of exception. So all this code can be found, of course, at github.com slash coffee before arch. So we can go ahead and pull that up here. Oops, there it is. So all this code and samples for this and other C++20 features that we're going to have examples of can be found this in this C++20 samples. We'll be covering things like more stuff on jthreads, concepts, etc. But that's going to do it for this episode. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.